God bless you today, for today is the day the Lord has made. I was shown some videos about people talking about the restrainer, that he will be removed soon. And let me just go ahead and clear this all up. So who is the restrainer? It's the church. All right, Second Theo, uh, Theologians chapter 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Concerns false teaching by false teachers. And we have a lot of that going on. There's more false teaching by false teachers than there is of uh, true teachers teaching the truth. Only he, the church, who now lets, who now hinders evil, will let, will continue to hinder until he, the church, be taken out of the way. The pronoun he confuses some people. In verse 4 and 6, the pronoun he refers to the Antichrist, while in verse 7, it refers to the church. So, it is saved people that hinders how evil this world could be. If you were to remove the church, save people, as bad as things are now, this would be great times compared to what would happen then. Save people prevent things that could happen from happening. So as bad as things are now, and they are bad, they would be infinitely worse if there were no saved people. So as long as there are saved people and the church is here, the Antichrist cannot come forward because if he did, you would have saved people, the church, tell everyone who the Antichrist is and what he's going to do. And that would be a problem. So the church must be removed. Say people must be removed from the equation. And that will be the rapture of the church. So um, if we go to verse 8. And then after the rapture of the church shall the wicked, the Antichrist, be revealed. Proving conclusively that the rapture takes place before the great tribulation. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, should have been translated the breath of his mouth, and shall destroy it with the brightness of his coming. Both phrases refer to the second coming. All right, so when will the church be removed? Well, we have scripture for that. Let's go to it. All right, now we're going to go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 32. Start with that. And this will explain to you when... You can expect the removing of the church, the rapture of the church. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. The Bible presents three trees, the fig, the olive, and the vine, as representing the nation of Israel, nationally, spiritually, and dispensationally, when his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves. It is meant to serve as an illustration of Israel nationally. You know that summer is near, refers to Israel as the greatest prophetic sign of all, telling us that we are now living in the last of the last days. So we know we're in the last of the last days because Israel is a nation. All right. So likewise, ye points to the modern church when you shall see all these things, which are now seeing as it regards Israel. Know that it is near even at the doors, the fulfillment of the end time prophecies. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass. The generation of Jews which will be alive at the beginning of the great tribulation, as well as was the prediction by Christ that irrespectively of the problems that Israel would face, even from his day they would survive. So all these things be fulfilled. There is no doubt they would be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Doesn't refer to annihilation, but rather a change from one condition state to another. But my words shall not pass away. What the word of God says will be. But of that day and hour knows no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. So when someone tells you that God gave them a vision of when the end is coming, they're lying. Once again, but of that day and hour knows no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. 
Only God knows. No one else. The exact moment when it will, the day it will happen, the hour it will happen, no one knows but God. All right. Um, verse 37. But as the days of Noah, when we're living in the days of Noah, that's when you know we are a breath away from the end happening. So, but as the days of Noah's were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And the men of the men of Noah's days were insensible to the prophecies predicting the coming flood, and so will men be blind to these prophecies announcing the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, it refers to an absolute lack of concern respecting Noah's message of a coming flood. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, it means that they watched him build the ark and heard him preach righteousness for many years, but took no heed and knew not until the flood came and didn't believe the message until the water began to uh, precipitous rise and took them all away. They were all drowned and consequently eternally lost. So shall also the coming of the son of man be the similarity with Noah's time. Then shall be then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. It does not refer to the rapture as many believe, but rather the terrible loss of life during the great tribulation. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore a warning to Israel to be prepared, for you know not what hour your Lord does come. Presents believers know present believers know that the second coming will take place during the battle of Armageddon. But unredeemed Israel will not know. So, but know this, that if the good men of the house had known and what had known and what watched the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. As unexpected as this is, likewise will be the coming of the Lord. Therefore be also ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. When Israel during uh, the battle of Armageddon will have given up hope, Jesus will come. So, the restrainer is the church. It is saved people, the body of Christ that prevents the Antichrist from being here. It prevents the world from being as evil as it could be. Once again, as, as, as evil as the world is, as bad as things are, it is nothing compared to what it would be. When God removes all the, the all the saved people, when the church is removed, when there are no saved people on earth, then you will see how bad it will be. It's unimaginable. Now, as far as when this will happen, no one but God knows when. But we will be extremely close, a breath away, when we are living during the days of Noah. During the days of Noah, as the word says, People had no care whatsoever for God, not even a thought. They just were oblivious to anything spiritual, to anything dealing with God, just living their life without God. And you couldn't tell them anything. They didn't care, not interested. And when you have a world like that, you can imagine the depths of sin everyone will be in. It's because of God that we don't have what we could have going on in this world. So that's who the restrainer is. It's the church. No one knows the day and the hour, but God, when he will come back. And when it's the days of Noah again, and the Bible doesn't say this, but I think personally, once again, the Bible does not say this. I think once they make it legal for pedophilia, I think then we will be completely in the days of Noah, just completely godless in every way. And then I think that will be very, very, very close um, to the end. Now, that's not biblical. I'm just thinking, how low can we go? What do what what could happen to put us into the days of Noah? Something like that would certainly do it. 
So as bad as things are, things are going to get much, 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 much worse. But as bad as things are, they would be infinitely worse if it wasn't for saved people. Saved people make a difference in this world. So, all right. Hopefully that clears that up. And God bless you.